Well, look at my beautiful view today. Oh, that's a view of Lynn's bouquet of cotton balls. It's, uh, it's real cotton. This is my voltmeter up here. There, you can see that. 12.6, 12.7, 13.1. The batteries are fully charged. When it pulls 40 amps, it still shows 12.6. And what's going on... I just did dishes. I should have put those away. What's going on is, this is my Instapot. It started out cooking lima beans and ham for 45 minutes. It's down to 11 minutes. And my batteries are still fully charged from my solar. Well, I took the popcorn kettle, the one with the crank there, and the popcorn, and the oil out to the fire last night and started popping popcorn and the first kettle full tasted fishy. We figured out that the first kettle full was melting off the rancid oil from me not washing it a year ago. The second batch was really good and I washed it today so tonight everybody's looking forward to popcorn. We're in Arizona, that's California on the other side. And uh, Ken, Colleen, Kate, hello! <laughs> and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh no, did I sound like Mr. Rogers? And over there is uh, Kathy. And a bit of a breeze, but all is well. But I'm going to go in here and sit down and tell you something that I promised to do back in July. I'm going to sit right there in my chair and talk to you. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Hi friends. I got a comment a couple of days ago about do I worry about the police stopping me in Mexico. And uh, I got another comment that reminded me that back in July I had promised to tell some stories about being stopped by the police in Mexico. So I thought that's what I would do today. Uh, when I first came to Mexico, of course it kind of worried me too that uh, you never know what's going to happen during a, an official stop, whether it's by the police in Mexico or if it's one of those military stops where they have the sandbags with the machine gun and uh, supposedly if you don't stop the machine gun is going to catch up with you. The first one I went through uh, of those, and I may have talked about this in one of my videos before, so if I'm repeating myself uh, I apologize. Um, the first one of those I stopped at, I, I got stopped at was between Chapala and Guadalajara and the officer came up to the window and said something to me in Spanish and I was nervous. I was in my little Suzuki. And I didn't understand what he said in Spanish and I replied, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. And he started laughing at my nervousness and my statement and said in perfect English, I presume you mean you don't speak Spanish. And he got us out of the car and looked under the seat, and we got back in the car and left, and that was the end of it. But um, it was uh, just an, uh, my nervousness that I didn't even say what I meant to say. Uh, I think we'd been in Mexico about a year, and we were up in Guadalajara on the Periferico. And the Periferico is a ring road that goes all the way around the city of Guadalajara. It's uh, three or four lanes going each way, and sometimes five or six lanes if the Mexicans all get in a hurry and use the ditches on both sides as lanes. Well, I had pulled off. Uh, we were going to check on a, a vehicle that was being repaired, and so I had another 
person with me, and Lynn was with me, and uh, her boyfriend, who spoke a little bit of Spanish, but not much. And we pulled off, but it wasn't the right exit. So we're getting back on the peripherical. Now, those ramps that go on to freeways, um, in California we call them speed ramps, because you speed up and you match your speed with the flow of traffic. In Texas, in Dallas, the ring road has a stop sign at the end of it. I don't know if they still do, but a long time ago when I used to live in Texas, uh, they had stop signs at the end of what we, at the time, Californians called speed ramps. So you're looking backwards like this, and um, uh, Californians would have rear-end collisions because they're looking back to time themselves with the flow of traffic, and there's a stop sign at the end of the speed ramp. Anyway, on the peripherical, there was a long ramp going on to the peripherical, and at, towards the end of the ramp, there was a police car and had another car stopped and two officers. And as I went past, the officer did this. And it didn't make any sense to me because I'm kind of looking back, but I see him, and I'm speeding up to match the flow of traffic, and I think he means slow down, and that just, it's a, it's a, it's the opposite of what my brain is thinking. I'm thinking speed up, and he's telling me slow down. Well, it turns out that he didn't mean slow down. He meant stop, and I didn't. So, one officer jumps in the police car and chases us down with the lights, and and uh, the siren. I say lights, but when you drive in Mexico, you will find that police cars have their lights on all the time. And if you're a U.S. driver and a police car comes up behind you with their lights on, you think he's either after you or he wants to pass you. But in Mexico, they just drive around with their lights on all the time. And I, I don't have an explanation for that. I'm just giving you my observation. They do have, not sirens, but really ugly, loud-sounding beep, beep horns that tell you to pull over. Anyway, he pulls us over, and um, the guy that was with me, who sort of but didn't really speak a little bit of Spanish, was trying to talk to him. And uh, nothing was happening. The guy was irate because he thought I disrespected him by not stopping when he did this. And so he was not, uh, he, was not in a, he was not a happy officer. Anyway, he has, by this time he's got my driver's license in his shirt pocket and he tells us to follow him. And so we follow him and we go down to the next exit on the freeway, peripherical and pull off into a residential neighborhood and we're going down through several blocks of um, what didn't appear to be a very nice part of town and we're getting very concerned we're thinking okay this is it he's gonna dump us out and take our car or whatever finally he weasels his way around through this residential neighborhood and gets underneath the freeway uh, underpass and back up on the freeway and goes back to where, uh, about where we were before. And his partner, who didn't jump in the car with him when he came to chase me, uh, has now crossed the freeway, all uh, eight lanes at that point, and he's standing over there in the bushes on the other side, so we pull off there, and the other officer comes out, and then it becomes apparent to me, because this officer speaks English, uh, that um, I'm going to need to pay my way out of this situation. The term in Spanish is mordida, and the literal translation is the little bite. So they want a little bite out of your billfold. And uh, the other guy that's with me now, he's, he's sort of trying to negotiate this. So he offers them like 50 pesos, and... Uh, the officer in English replies, that's not even going to pay for my gas for chasing you down. Anyway, it soon became apparent to me that there was a process that goes on here, and he couldn't threaten me at the first stop 
with the ticket because they have a ticket book. And his partner, who didn't come along, didn't have the ticket book. So now they've got the ticket book, and they're threatening us with the ticket book. And anyway, uh, 200 pesos, and we're on our way. Um, another traffic stop. I wasn't driving. I was in a, a big uh, four-wheel drive diesel pickup and I, as a passenger. And the owner of the pickup was driving. And again, this was in the city of Guadalajara. And we were on what's called the lateral. You may have a main street with a couple of lanes going each way. And then off to the side of that is another separate street, one that goes one way on one side and the other way on the other side, and they're called laterals. Well, we're on a lateral, and a motorcycle cop runs us down. And he claims that we had run a red light, which absolutely was not true. I mean, there were four of us in the vehicle, and I'm always watching, even though I'm not driving, I absolutely know we did not run a red light. So he's just saying that in order to get some money from us. Well, the guy who was driving was very inexperienced um, in Mexico. And so he pulls out his wallet and he's got a stack of bills in there like this. And it costs us 600 pesos. I think it would have cost us 100 pesos if um, somebody who had a little more experience had done the negotiating. But that was, uh, that was a month's pay for this guy. Well, not a month's, but it was a lot of money for, for paying uh, Mordita at a traffic stop in Guadalajara. So the motorcycle now, we have asked him for directions and realized that we're on a lateral, but we have gone too far and we need to make a U-turn. So now that we're buddy, 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 and have uh, financed him and his family for some considerable amount of time, he goes with his motorcycle, turns on the lights, and he's got traffic in four lanes, two going each way, stopped so that we can make a U-turn. And we do, and then he catches up and passes us, and he's going to lead us. We're trying to get the Costco on out on... Uh, uh, Vallarta, if, if you're from Guadalajara and you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, he takes us back and he's leading the way to show us where to go and it turns out that the guy is one of the motorcycle ap acrobats. He, and you have to have a special motorcycle to do this because if you let go of the throttle, it'll go down. So he set the throttle. He stands up on his seat and he's moving the motorcycle, driving it like this, by leaning. Uh, put on a great show for us. Led us into the parking lot, you know, stopped, had a lot of laughs, and um, it's another stop by the police in Mexico that turns out to be a story instead of a scary thing. Um, I've got a I've got quite a few of these in, in the 18 years that we've lived there. I've been stopped by the police quite a few times. Not as much as uh, we used to be for two reasons. First of all, in the town of Ahihik and Chapala on the north shore of Lake Chapala, uh, the police pretty much recognize me and my cars as, uh, as locals, so they're not wasting their time with me because they know I'm not going to pay them a mordita anyway. So what you do is you just say, well, give me the ticket. I know where to pay it uh, over there in Chapala. And the, the, the half of the time, the, they're not going to waste their time writing you a ticket. They'll say something like, well, I'm going to give you two tickets next time. And that's absolutely happened. Um, I was on the way to the airport one day, right in Ahihik, well, actually, La Floresta. And... In La Floresta, there's a place where you're supposed to, in order to make a left turn, you go off the highway to the right and around a circle. It's not really a glorietta or a roundabout or a, 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 a circle drive. It's kind of like that, but not exactly. Anyway, uh, I'm going straight, and there's an officer standing in the middle of the road who is directing the car ahead of me, to turn left 
off the road. And he doesn't really move, he's just looking at me, and I follow that car, because I think he's telling me to make a left turn, which is illegal. It's, there's a big sign, you know, no left turn. You're supposed to go to off to the right and around the circle instead of just to make a left turn. So he comes to me first, because uh, he's walking off the road to come to where we've stopped, and he asked me for my driver's license, and I hand it to him, and he puts it in his shirt pocket and walks up to the other car. Well, I'm on my way to the airport, which is not a left turn, that's straight ahead. And I'm a little annoyed that he has stopped me for no apparent reason. And I get out of my car, and I go over there to where he's talking to the other car, to their driver's window. And I said, why did you stop me? He said, you made an illegal left-hand turn, and I kind of lost it. Um, <laughs> the only reason I made a left-hand turn is because you're standing in the middle of the road pointing for me to do so. I'm on my way to the airport. This is not the way to the airport. The airport is straight. That's where I was going. Why did you make me go over here? And he kind of, he took his, the license out of his shirt pocket, and he handed it to me with a little bow and said, I'm sorry, sir. Have a nice day. <laughs> Uh, again, I've got a number of these stories, and the point that I want to make with them um, is that uh, being stopped by the police in Mexico, as long as you are um, respectful and, and don't get all um, angry about it, um, they are uh, equally respectful and generally might not uh, have stopped you for a good reason, and they might want a little mordida. And the country of Mexico is working on that, by the way. Uh, we don't do that anymore. And as expats who live there, we don't encourage other people to do that anymore. And 18 years ago, it was a little different. It's much better now, and there is much less of this, you know, the little bite at a traffic stop. Uh, my point is that uh, you shouldn't be afraid to be stopped by the Mexican police. Um, it might cost you a little money, but it's not going to be as much money as a real ticket in the United States. And um, unless you're off in the dark in a, in a, a rural area, um, nothing really serious is going to happen. Now, why did I say off in the dark in a rural area? Well, because it can be a lot more expensive off in the dark in a rural area and a lot scarier if there's, you know, other cars and traffic and your, you know, traffic stop in Ajijic or Chapala or even Guadalajara is not a, is, is a public thing. There's lots of people around, so nothing really untoward is going to happen. If you like these stories, I've probably got several more and uh, even more of them from uh, friends who have told me stories about their stops. So let me know if you want to hear some more of these or if you just find them annoying or boring. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.